The Craftsman's Guild of Mississippi offers classes that are open to the public, so if you'd like, you can come out and take a class and learn from a pro. Maybe one day become a member of the guild yourself. Now, while some skills are learned in classes, others are passed down through the generations, from family member to family member. And that's just the case with the lady we're about to meet. She is an embroidery artist, a Governor's Arts Award winner, and Ruth Miller's talent is not limited to just the colors of her threads. case the model had gray hair so there are naturally different shades of color uh, in the hair but even when it appears that the uh, the model has a single color hair I can use well even unnatural colors just to add emphasis and to, to highlight the, the directions of the hairs. I was born in New York City, and my mother was from Meridian, Mississippi. I came to Mississippi first in the 1970s, and it was a big shock, uh, a big change in lifestyle. So I stayed about five years and uh, went back to New York and came back recently in 2009. And I've been here ever since. My, uh, my mother and my aunt Mildred, also from Meridian, uh, both were needle workers. My mother taught me to sew, so I'm able to make my own clothing. My aunt Mildred crocheted and did embroidery such as the type that you would see on tablecloths, napkins, aprons that women used to wear at the time. But she also sold some of the crafts that she made to her co-workers. So she was my first influence of working at a craft, making items for sale. But the reason I work with embroidery is because I didn't like paint. And once I saw an embroidered, not an embroidered, a woven tapestry uh, at the World's Fair in Montreal. I said, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use my embroidery skills to make wall hung art. This is how I start pieces. Uh, once in a while, I'll uh, get the idea before <laughs> I get the photograph. But in this case, I had already shot the model and he was standing around talking to somebody else in the room, so I continued shooting. So what I do is take the photograph first, make a line drawing, and then I will Xerox the line drawing and use it to make, to figure out the shadows and the highlights and stuff like that. And I'll also use a Xerox copy or a photocopy to work out the placement of the colors. So this will be my color reference for when I'm working. But when I'm actually stitching the piece, I will work and look at all of these at once because they all have a different type of information for me. This is the type of fabric that I generally use. Uh, I prefer linen best. Uh, this is, this fabric is jute and cotton. This is a wooden stretcher, canvas stretcher. And I will draw a grid that 
corresponds to the size of the grid in this piece on top of the fabric here with a ruler. I'll, I'll mark off the inches or inch and a half or whatever it, uh, basis I want to use and mark it here. And most times I will actually stitch on the inside instead of the reverse side because that will keep my fingerprints from making the work dirty over several months. The piece that I have in the Mississippi Muse Museum of Art was the first piece I decided uh, to make when I formally started out as an artist. Because no one knew I was setting out to be a tapestry artist, uh, I took as much time as I wanted. I only let my own interests guide me as to how the piece would turn out and what size it was. It, it is my biggest piece because the, the first thing I discovered was like, wow, this has taken uh, 19 months to stitch. So, you know, it's obvious this will not be the size I'll be working in. Our next recipient takes embroidery to a spectacular new level. She uses this medium to tell stories of the African-American experience. Let's learn about Ruth Miller. Wow, the, the Governor's Arts Award was so unexpected. Uh, it, I don't know if one can apply for something like that, but the Mississippi Museum of Arts was kind enough to nominate me. And, and that's how I, I well, I came to the attention of whoever makes those decisions. Um, it was such a warm reception. That, that all of us received, all the recipients. I was the only one in the, in the uh, category of visual art, but there were uh, other fine artists in, in music and theater and, and all that. And, and it's important that artists meet other artists to know what's going on. And it's important that you get a chance to say thank you uh, and uh, a televised thank you is even better. But to, to really thank the people who've been instrumental in your success. People interrupt your solitude and say, you're doing fine work. You have no idea what, how that uplifts, what a support that is. The fact that you are sitting here listening, I thank you also. One thing I want people to take with them is that it's okay to actually strive for technical excellence. It gives you something that money can't give you. The personal development that, that accrues by learning to do something well. Thanks for joining us. If you like what you see, subscribe to Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Till next time, I'll be seeing you on Mississippi Roads.